Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Safety instrumented system and safety integrity levels. In this video course, you will learn what is safety instrumented system, its importance as protective layer in chemical plant safety, what is safety integrated level SIL and its role in risk reduction, types of cell system, real world examples of cis and cell system. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce more knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. Safety instrument system has been in existence for a long time in chemical process plants as a protective layer where there is a potential risk to life or environment if something undesirable happens. In chemical process plant, no single action leads to a large incident. It is usually a series of events before an incident occurs. As discussed in the last video titled Introduction to Safeguarding System, there are layers of protection to prevent an incident. They are protection layers including basic process control system, safety instrumented system SIS, safety valves and mitigation layers, emergency response like dikes etc. These responses may be either automated or initiated by human action in order to prevent a failure from proceeding to an undesired consequence. Safety instrument system is also known as safety interlock system. Process plants are operated in automatic process control mode using the basic process control system BPCS through DCS. BCPS performs the process control functions of all the production and processing operations in the production unit. CIS are designed to perform protective functions that supplement the process control function performed by the BPCS. SCS reduces the risk so that the hazard arising from the process is tolerable. SCS provides a safety layers to the process in three levels during operation. One, process shutdown, a less critical event. Two, emergency shutdown, such as loss of utilities, critical events. Three, additional layer of protection for detection of sea leaks and fire and for quick isolation by use of ROVs. A safety instrumented system is a system which uses instrumentation to both monitor the process parameters and ensure that the process is safe when a process parameter such as temperature or pressure exceeds a preset value that has potential to lead to some undesirable event. The SIS consists of sensors, logic servers, relays and valves which function to achieve the intended safety. For example, let us consider a distillation column shown in this figure. Very high pressure in the distillation column beyond the safe working pressure can cause mechanical integrity issues and has the potential to cause loss of containment. High pressure can be caused by loss of cooling water or utility or control wall failure. Hence, it needs to be protected against high high pressure by a SIS or trip interlock. A high high pressure trip is provided as a safety interlock to shut down the system. What happens if the intended trip action does not take place? What causes the safety instrumented function to fail? SIS shall provide an independent protection layer against the potential process hazards. SIS should be designed to minimize the possibility of common mode failures. 
what are common mode failures common mode failures are failures that could lead to simultaneous failure of functions performed by the bpcs and sis how to minimize the common mode failures by design so that bpcs and sis do not fail together a safety instrument system is a dedicated system consisting of sensors actuators and control valve or trip valves to perform one or more safety instrumented functions saf for example saf function could be very high pressure trip of distillation column as described above each saf has its own sensor controller and final control element there is a trip valve air control valve the sas should be highly reliable fault tolerant and fail safe but sas is not fail proof the components used in the sas can fail causing the sas to fail if the sas fails it can lead to undesirable incident safety integrity level hence how do we reduce the probability of a component failures and make the sis more reliable and fail proof that is achieved by defining the performance level of the sis by the term called safety integrity level sil a measure of risk reduction of the safety function is called safety integrity level in other words sil also referred to as functional safety is a way of determining how likely is a safety function to operate correctly when required the greater the hazard potential of the risk the more reliable sas should be the greater the risk reduction needed and so the higher the sil iec international electrotechnical commission has provided international standard iec 61508 stroke iec 61511 which is used by the safety equipment manufacturers to make sis according to this standard there are four levels of sil with corresponding requirements for risk reduction factor or a rif and probability of failures on demand pfd pfd is defined as the probability of failure to perform its design function on demand risk reduction factor rrf is inverse of the required probability of failure and is represented in years the stable persons the sil level and the pfd with or already higher sil level means greater process hazard and a higher level of protection required from sis referring to the stable for example if the required probability of failure value is 0.001 per year you need a reduction risk reduction factor of 1000 meaning that the instrumented function sif would fail during a dangerous scenario once every 1000 years indeed it is a very stringent safety measure to ensure that sif does not fail higher sil means a more complex system and a higher installation and maintenance cost sil is determined by a process hazard analysis pha based on three broad categories process safety impact equipment damage operational disturbance process plants typically only require sil 1 and sil 2 safety instrumented functions sil 3 is adopted in refineries and petrochemical plants handling and processing highly flammable liquid involving very high cost typical examples of safety integrity level in petrochemical plants sil 3 example for any failure that can cause equipment and piping operation outside the mechanical design limit sil 3 safeguarding is required 
Such failures has potential to cause hazard that will pose threat to operating personnel and environment. This is the highest safety integrity level recognized by standard IEC 61511 for process industries. The PFD probability of failure and demand of a SIL 3 SIS is 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 4. SIL 2 examples. SIL 2 is applied to process failures resulting in major equipment damage without loss of containment that poses no immediate threat to personnel or the environment. The loss is primarily economic due to the equipment repair or replacement and plan downtime. The risk is at reduced level in these occurrences. SIL 1 examples A process failure resulting only in a major operational disturbance that primarily causes production loss loss of quality and or temporary loss of production hours. There is only economic impact. There is no risk to the operating personnel or the environment. Still one safeguarding is appropriate for these situations. Characteristics of SIL 3 SIS system. SIL-3 systems are characterized by redundancy in all the components including process sensors, logic solvers, process connections, field instruments such as trip valves. Measurement of process parameters such as pressure, temperature and flows are done by three instruments. Voting configurations example. Two out of three selection strategy are commonly employed to reduce the frequency of unnecessary or nuisance SIS activation. Sensors for process parameters should be separate for process control function and SIS to achieve SIL3 target level. This includes sense pass for temperature, pressure, and concentration. For example, Temperature measure for DCS indication or control and trip system are separate in SIL 3 system. In the case of pressure, there is an exception to this requirement. A pressure transmitter can be shared between DCS and SIS provided there is another protective layer to take care of the potential hazard. Safety protection layer in this case is a safety relief valve PSP to protect the process equipment. Real world examples of SIL 3 system Fired heater In terms of consequence, severity is extremely high in heat transfer equipment including heat exchangers, fired heaters and boilers. Before we move on, I would like to make a call to my dear viewers. Your Spec eLearn channel is one-stop learning and skill development destination for your career needs. Get instant access to useful career-oriented subjects and become knowledgeable and competent. So do not forget to subscribe. Please press the subscribe button now. The major hazard is Loss of coil mechanical integrity due to over temperature and over pressure. Illustrated in the figure is a fired heater which is provided with SIL 3 system for protection against over temperature, over pressure, faulty firing and deflagration. For your understanding of the SIL 3 system, we discuss the over temperature and over pressure protection in detail. Over pressure. Over pressure protection of the process convection and radiant coils is provided via 
pressure relief valves on the heater outlet line. Over temperature. Over temperature of the heater coils can result as a result of the following causes. Low feed flow to heater, blocked outlet, loss of firing control. The excessively high temperature may be the result of faulty firing condition or coil failure. When the coil fails, the leaking fluid can burn in the firebox creating dangerous situation. Silithi system SIF is provided to reduce the risk of over temperature in the heat. Any one of the following process parameter deviation will lead to trip of the heater. Low low flow from chase tail, low low feed flow to heater, high high process coil outlet temperature. This figure illustrates the SIL3 system temperature and pressure interlock for the heater. Note, in the SIL3 system, there are three temperature transmitters for high-high temperature shutdown and three pressure transmitters for high-high pressure shutdown. This is an extreme redundancy measure to reduce the risk of the transmitter failure. At any point of time, two out of three voting is taken for activating the temperature indication and activation of trip. This is the characteristic of SIL3 system SIF. In the same way, several other SIL3 interlocks are provided for the heater which are not explained here due to time constraint. SIL3 initiated actions are feed vapor valve is closed, fuel gas valves to the heater or closed. This figure illustrates the SIL3 SIS for low low feed flow to heater. Note there is one flow element but three transmitters as extreme redundancy measure. Two out of three voting is taken for low low flow trip and one out of three for raising low flow alarm. One of the trip action is also shown, that is, the closure of feed flow control valve and trip valve. Similar trip action is provided for closure of fuel valves. It is evident from this example the extent of redundancy in the SIL3 system by way of multiple transmitters, instrument connections, and logic servers. All of them together increase the cost of SIL3 system installation very high. That is the cost of achieving the required RRF and PFD. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this, we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career-oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.